It's been a minute, I know, but I'm back, baby. Okay, really what it was is I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with this content. I still like them. I'm producing them, but I'm doing them more here in video. Actually, I'm doing a lot of them live on LinkedIn going forward. At least that's the plan. This is one of those videos, and I'll probably put this on the Authentic Avenue podcast as well in audio form, but wanted to introduce it here. This was the first live stream that I did on LinkedIn, and I got a buddy of mine, Pete, who uh, is up here in Pittsburgh with me, another founder, to serve as the, the guinea pig, as it were. He knew I could interview him just fine. He wasn't even at his home. He was on vacation, but he let me talk to him for like 20 minutes, and I think we had a decent conversation. So I figured, why not put it here for you as a uh, soft and rough means of bringing this channel back to life a little bit. And so that's what I'm doing. This is um, maybe a refreshed Authentic Avenue format in video with Pete Schramm from Lattice. And I'll link that in the uh, description below. Not the show notes, the description. Well, I'll do it in the show notes too. Anyway, here he is. <laughs> Almost screwed this up. Uh, welcome everybody to Pete Schramm from Lattice. Now, Pete, I wish that I actually had your uh, correct broadcast frame up here. So let me do that real fast. There he is. Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. What's up, cool. Pete? Thank you so much for uh, joining the first stream I've ever done for being a guinea pig. I understand that you, as soon as you heard you were going to be here, rather than be in Pittsburgh with me, you fled the state uh, and you are now in Cape Cod, I think. How are those lobsters? Yeah, they're great. We didn't get the lobsters yet, but uh, we're going to go find some later this afternoon. So, yeah, lobsters are uh, not safe while we're up here. Yeah, you'll get on a roll soon. So I am really interested in in a few things. First of all, thank you for joining me while out of town. Uh, you're also joining us via satellite feed. Uh, viewers, very advanced stream here. but uh, Thousands of them now, right? Yeah, exactly. it's, it's, it's flying. You're LinkedIn. On LinkedIn! Holy... Okay. Hey, uh, viewers, if you can see all of this, uh, throw a comment into the chat. Say hello to Pete. By the way, introduce yourselves, network with each other, but listen to what we have to say. Now, Pete, when I first met you, it was 2015, I guess, and uh, I, 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 you were still in the D.C. area with me. Eventually, you decide that uh, you've got an idea in your head that you wanted to uh, just see if there were any legs to it. Of course, it took a while to become a full-time entrepreneur. But before we talk about that journey, can you talk a little bit about what Lattice is and does right now? It does this. It brings people together to have the right folks in the right rooms to have the necessary conversations. Lattice is the one-stop shop employee engagement platform. And we help organizations onboarding new talent, mentorship programs, and building out your personal board of advisors. That's what my TED Talk was uh, about two weeks ago. So Lattice saves you time. And the big focus is on the results, right? You can talk about features. You can talk about those different pieces of it. But Lattice is all about keeping your people. Attract, engage, develop, retain. You did a TED Talk two weeks ago? Yeah. Where was I? Where was the invite, uh, Pete? <laughs> it was for uh, a closed group of people. Um, inside the Department of Defense. Whoa. Okay, so you're in there with all, all right, you're getting all the secrets. Now, it, I knew that you had your clearance in D.C., right? You still have that? They let you They let you in the room, so you must have it. And correct, yes. Yeah, yeah, correct. All right, any secrets for us? No, never mind. So, uh, yeah, well, there's, there's all kinds of secrets. We'll just have to figure out which ones we're going to share. Oh, okay. Could have been a big reveal here on the stream. It's all right. We're going to drop breaking news eventually. We'll be the source for exclusive uh, news from our entrepreneurs and the governmental agencies. We'll wait until we're up to over 10,000 people on, That's the, right. on the live stream. That's right. So, okay. Uh, jokes aside, tell, tell me about the, the moment or the week or the month leading up to the point that you decided, like I did, to start your own business because that is a, a yeah. huge jump that a lot of people, actually a lot of people viewing this probably haven't made but have just have have imagined when yeah. the rubber hits the road, like how, how does that feel? What were the factors that caused that push? Okay. So we'll start off by what was going through my head uh, right before March 4th, 2018. Okay. Um, I remember uh, meeting with Dave and Mike at 
uh, bar right in DuPont Circle. And I think it's changed names a couple of times. But we would just meet up there like on Wednesdays or every other week and be like, okay, we're going to start a business and these are the right people. And we're going to do something. Yeah. Entrepreneurship. We all studied some kind of engineering and all worked uh, either at Lockheed Martin or, or Lidos. Um, so defense contractors. So we know what big companies are. But we it's wanted a completely to sober more. conversation, by the way, too, right? Something that's like, oh, yeah, cut for a couple of beers. Yeah. The business sounds great. It, um, there, there was intention, yeah, sure, uh, sure, sure. you know, each, each time I still have some of the notebooks for each of them. Um, and, and it got to the point where we're like, huh, we're on to something here. Yeah. And then we would find out like another day later. No, nope, no, that's not a great idea. So then we stopped, uh, those, but I, those meetings together as a group. Uh, but I kept having uh, those different like self discussions. And it was one day, uh, you know, I was living in DC, working in DC, and having one or two or three or four calls a day. Hey, Pete, how'd you get to where you are? Hey, Pete, can you connect me to this kind of person? Hey, Pete, can we practice for this kind of an interview? Can you look at my resume? Can you connect me over that way? Like, I, I need a new job, right? So all these different things. And I was spending multiple hours a day. And I'm like, huh, man, I'd really love to start a company. Man, I'd really love to help all these people. Man, everybody needs connected. And I'm like, uh, hmm. All my friends were leaving their jobs to travel the world, to go to med school, to you know, start a basketball company. And I'm like, my friends are following their dreams. What are my dreams? How do I put all these different things together? Huh? Look at that, right? Hey. All coming together. Yeah. Yeah. And uh that's that's where it came to be. And so I drew a line in the sand on March 4th, 2018, and said, I'm gonna start a company. And then I Googled how to start a company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so March 4th, 2018, you figure out the hand gesture, by the way, for folks who didn't know that very, it's a lattice. Now, of course, your uh, name, I'm guessing, play on words with, with lattice, L-A-T-T-I-C-E, but us, right? The connection. It's so all about you, us. Yeah. It's, well, exactly. You Google in the first quarter of uh, 2018. By the way, first comment comes in, Dave Golding, another Pittsburgh guy, says hello to Pete. Um, you, hey, Dave. Nice to meet you. Yeah, actually, you Thanks guys would get along. Okay. Yeah, cool. I'll, I'll connect you. See, networking live and in person. So, well, not in person, but we'll get there. So, yeah. in the first quarter of 2018, you say, okay, I'm going to start Googling how to actually start this. How long mm -hmm. was it between that epiphany of, okay, I'm going to break through this bar barrier and finally do this for real? to the first time where you said, okay, I was right. Like, because I think a lot of people don't understand really how long it can take between that first ideation and first like, okay, I'm going to take the first step to getting like to knocking on the door to getting a response. For me, it took several months for you. What was that process like? You know, I'm still figuring it out. If I'm going to be honest with you, uh, I set pretty high expectations and you know, we always talk about, as an entrepreneur, you're on this climbing a mountain journey and it's lonely. And, you know, it, it, it is for sure, but you're also, you're never quite at the top of the mountain, right? So we're still going on the way up. Let's talk about from that idea, the date of the idea to the date that I went full time. And that was October 5th, uh, 2020. So wow. almost two and a half years later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm working, building this on the side, trying to figure out, hey, you know, is there a need? So number one is, is there a need? Right. Uh, then the other piece is like, is am I solving a problem or am I building something and then they will come? So the big question to ask yourself, is this an aspirin or is this a vitamin? Aspirin, like you don't really need them, but a, or, so a, no, no, no. Vitamin, you don't really need it, right? There's plenty of people that you. don't take We're, all, we're, all, we're all here. Right? Yeah. Yep. Aspirins. Uh, I'm in pain right? Am I solving a pain? So that's the first thing, second thing. And then is, are people going to pay for it, right? If people are going to pay for it and you're going to generate revenue off of this thing, then it's more than just a hobby. Hobby takes your money, uh, a job gives you money, makes you money. Um, so those are the two different pieces. And so we generated some revenue before I went full time, but it was also one of those instances where uh, different advisors, different investors were getting involved. And I said, hey, I need to make it clear to everybody else that I'm very serious about this. And, you know, in my 20s, I figured if I failed, um, I, you know, get to the point of 30 years old and hit the reset button, not the end of the world. I'll learn a lot. I'll meet a lot of people and we will succeed in some capacities. 
So October of 2020, and I, I remember this fondly because this was this was right around the time when I, I was pushed myself into this world. Yeah. Now, I didn't have, you know, roughly what, what would it have been, two and a half years of pre-thought, but same time, and you post a video on LinkedIn, and I remember this because it like went locally viral, at least to me. I've never seen a video with 500 likes or whatever it has now. Um, everybody was thrilled to hear about this update. Now, I experienced something similar, not as big of a magnitude, but I said, hey, I'm going to start my own thing. And everybody's like, whoa, Hype Cycle was way up here. How I want to know, because obviously you had a little bit of revenue trickling in. I had a little bit, a little bit later on. But personally, I experienced that the next three to six months was like the real test because I thrive on words of affirmation. I thrive on people like clapping and saying, yeah, good for you. I also thrive on money, but who doesn't? Those first like three, six months for you, what were that like? What were they like after making that announcement? Did anything change? Was it the two and a half years of mental prep, which kept you through that? Um when was your first moment of temptation? And by temptation, I mean, ah, uh, God, job sounds great. You know, can you, can you talk about that for a second? Hmm. So that was about two year year and a half ago now, right? So I made the right. leap, left corporate America about a year and a half ago. That's right. And it was scary. It was very, very scary to. Uh, you know, move home to my parents' basement uh, because rent in DC was uh, more than zero. So I'm sure. like, hmm, that's what we'll do. Right. And every you know successful startup has to have a basement story. So we have a basement and a barn. So something something good's gonna happen, right? <laughs> yeah. That's that's the <laughs> old we'll adage, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, then maybe a garage as well. We have to find a garage for part uh -huh. of the story. Right. Um, the next three to six months of the full-time journey, I surrounded myself with great people. There's a lot of um, accelerator programs, incubator programs. Uh, that you can access. And there are some in Pittsburgh. So, you know, shout out, thank you to Jim Gibbs, to uh, Scott McTaggart, to Kip Mueller, uh, to Michelle Flynn, um, to a couple of other, Curtis Wadsworth, right? Some of the other people in the Pittsburgh area that really helped out and said, hey, you want to be serious about starting this business? Here's what works and here's what doesn't. A lot of um, the business model canvas. Um, so going through the different pieces of, again, what we talked about, what's in your business plan? How do you make money? Who are you going to go after? Who are you going to target? And there's a lot of refine, refine, refine. I don't like to say no to people, Adam. Um, and you've learned this about uh, me quite a lot. And you've uh, kind of mentored me in this space as well. You're like, hey, you can't say yes to everybody. And you got, yeah, yeah, you have taught me things. Yes. And that is not just me. My shoulders are getting dirty, Pete. <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to get 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 it in writing later yeah. um yeah so the, yeah surrounding myself with the right people was uh very very important and that's particularly uh necessary whenever you have those rough days because right. whenever you're you know run leading the ship and you're running the party um you're running the company at the end of the day you're responsible for everything the good the bad the ugly and there's not really a way to say hey self man, this really sucked today. Uh, you know, let's just complain. Somebody else will pick up the slack. No. Right. Right. In, in the early days, especially, um, you need to have that kind of internal, uh, you know, fire. So for me, that's my, my why, right? Sure. Bettering the lives of others. And Lattice is simply a platform that helps us reach more people and helps companies, uh, you know, do what they're trying to do but you know, they don't have enough resources internally to accomplish it. Right. I, I can't break from that phrase of you're responsible for everything, the good, bad, and the ugly without asking just to have a little bit of fun. Can you give me the example of the ugly? Oh yeah. Uh, whenever. Hmm. <laughs> Stumped him. The good. Stumped the him folks. Okay, so the good is whenever we have things uh, that we're excited about and successes and the you know platform works. Right. The bad is whenever people say, no, I don't really want this or, uh, you know, not really a good time. And the ugly, oh, this is the ugly. Whenever you're doing a demo, right? Lattice is a software as a service. So technology, you're doing a demo and something just doesn't work. Or you do one thing and then something else pops up. And you're like, ah, we've done this thousands of times and that's never happened. That's never occurred before. Yeah. And I play it off as like, nice work. This is, we're being like a detective right now. Phenomenal. I'm so glad that we found this, right? 
um, you know, we are, you're, you're part of the story, get into the solution here. Um, that's less than ideal. Right. Um, whenever that happens, the other ugly part is the, the team, right? When the early stages, you don't necessarily have enough, uh, money to pay, uh, everybody. And so there are certain folks that will come on and they'll help and they say, Hey, I'm here. Like, what can I do to help? And then you get invested and it's kind of like a relationship, uh, right? Like dating. And so you get closer and closer and then life happens. And this happens in businesses. You know, I've hired and fired, you know, dozens, more than 50 people probably in a professional setting. But whenever it's your own organization, man, that is, uh, you know, different, yeah. right? So the people part, uh, and that we're all about bringing people together. Uh, and again, I love to please everybody. So whenever team members come and go, um, and of, of course it always happens for the right reasons, uh, but that, that can be just tough, right? Totally. Any kind of relationship that you're excited about and comes to an end, uh, can be a tough one. Yeah. I've, I've, I've felt that over the last, uh, roughly year. I'm, I'm glad that you have that example of the ugly. I, I, I went through something like that, uh, last week I was interviewing or I was, I was monitoring an interview. Uh, viewers, part of my work is sometimes I'm the host, sometimes I'm not. In this case, I was not. But we, I've used this like recording software, not this specific one, for hundreds of shows. I mean, like prob- over 300, maybe almost 400. And I had a first-time problem last week where somebody yeah. got on. <clears throat> we could all see them. We could see that their mic worked. We could, they could hear us, and they couldn't be heard. And I had to real quick pivot to something else, which was fine, but it made me look in front of this person like, what the hell are you doing? Right. And it's, and my client, my client is the host in this case. And, uh, you know, she's sitting on the line and the comms person and the marketing person and me and everybody, and it's audio only. So it's just deafening, ugly silence. Moments like that, you get by them. And then also, yeah, I mean, the, the, I'm not built a team yet, so I can't wait to go through that. But um, yeah, the, the, the money side's another interesting one too. So when you encounter these issues, let's say the bad and the ugly, because the good times are great. They're easy to get through, basically. What keeps you going? My why uh, of, you know, helping others, that's, that's important, right? The internal motivation. Uh, I'm intrinsically motivated to see other people succeed. Um, it's just, I love connecting people. You, how many times have we done this when you're like, Hey, do you know anybody that's kind of like this? I'm like, yeah, yeah. There's this person. Go talk with them. What about this? Yeah. Yeah. There's this person over here. Go talk to them. Um, Brian's also phenomenal at that. Yep. Um, there's just a lot of great people and then great people like to help other great people. Um, so that's one, uh, I think the athletic background is also a piece of it, right? So you, uh, set out and you want to win. And you go into a game, and this is a you know slightly different game, slightly longer game than a game of basketball. Uh, but it's also that kind of uh, can't stop, won't stop mindset. Right. Um, and then also the you know drive uh, to create something, right? Okay, we figured out ways not to do it. Um, okay, that didn't work. Let's try it differently. And the other part is, uh, I think back to Pet Rock a lot. I don't know. Do you know much about Pet Rock? Did you see the post I put up about that one? So Gary Dahl, he used to be in marketing and he said, hmm, I think he was out at a bar in California one day and he's like, hey, what if you had a pet that you didn't have to feed it, you didn't have to scoop its poop, it's not going to be loud and it costs like 10 bucks and your kid has a pet. Wouldn't that be pretty fantastic? The guy made millions of dollars putting rocks in a box and selling them. People have sold, done more with less. So I'm like, okay, we're just figuring out uh, more ways uh, to, you know, not uh, win as quickly as we'd like to. Sure. Yeah. But it's tough. Man. Great it's to tough. There are days when it's just like, oh, geez. No, of course. I've, I've been through them. I, I don't publicize them very often on LinkedIn. I guess I'm trying to, but uh, I'm right there with you. So I'm going to round this out. Thank you. For, for, first of all, thank you for being the skinny pig. I have another question. Um, mm-hmm. thank you for being this guinea pig with me. Um, before, before I go scale, scale of one to 10, honest with me, how'd it go? What'd you think? Yeah, I think it was good. Um, okay. I think, I don't know what number I would give it. I think I would want to understand what we were trying to accomplish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what would the agenda, what would some of the questions ahead of time be? Right. Um, so I'd say for not knowing anything tech, uh, it looks like 
I'm well also be curious to see how I look on the other side. It's a little grainy kind of black and white. I don't really know whether you're sitting in Cape Cod or in a forest filming the Blair Witch Project three. That no, it's in Sa- Salem. So we'll be going to, to oh. look at the witch trials. Yeah, yeah. Not of course. uh you're you're off by one town. My so bad. close. Uh <laughs> yeah, we'll work on that. Uh but it did look a little grainy on my side. Yeah. But I think um I wonder, can you put subtitles up here? And that's like questions on the screen. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. I have so I'm I'm looking down at my broadcast panel. Uh, viewers are getting real professional here, and I can certainly do it. Like there are things okay. that I can pull up, like images that I can pull up that you could see. Um, obviously, getting questions ahead of time. It's something I commonly do, but I was I this was a full mm-hmm. guinea pig because I didn't think this was going to work. Frankly, that's, that's um, fine. We got four people here watching this work now, so. Pff. 40,000 people. Hell wow. yeah. Sucking Jeez. haters, dude. Why? You didn't even think I could do it? What? Anyway, so, uh, yeah. And by the way, my entire professional network is watching. So, um, I yeah, I can do that. Um, that was That's part of the prep for sure. So, good. Okay, so it sounds like tech is okay. Sounds like the prep could have been better, but that's fine. I'm willing to take that. I mean, we are we north of, are we north of three? We're north of three. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, most definitely. Good. I, I'd say that we give this a, a seven out of ten. I'd wow. also, if we're if we're able to turn my video off over yeah. here, I don't know if you can get like that screen away so that I'm just looking at like us because over here I have like Adam and Pete and then all Pete all on my screen in front of us. Okay, it's a little so distracting. I'm kind of like, am I looking at me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how to do that one yet. I spent all week trying to figure that one out, but uh, that will happen. Okay. Uh, I might just throw a second webcam here somewhere. I don't know, so that I don't even mess with the split. But uh, anyway, good feedback. Thank you, Pete. Go enjoy the seafood, and uh, and I will see you. I don't know, maybe like... Well, what's going to happen from here? What are you doing with this now? Are people going to ask questions in the comments or do you want people to engage or there should we recommend other folks to you know come on for God, follow it's on almost session? like it's almost like you know what you're doing this is you're the networker guy i should be asking you all right well then listen i'm going to sit here we're about 15 seconds behind i think on the stream versus what people see if anybody has a question for pete put or it in Adam. the comments or me i you don't want to talk about yeah. put it in the comments and we will look at it and I will ask it, and we will go from there. I can fill up the uh, I can fill up the space a little bit, Pete. Um, and we'll go to some of the good because I focused on how to come back from the bad and ugly. What was your first deal like? Tell me about what you did for the remainder of the day once you hit your first deal. I'm a weirdo. I went and worked and tried to do another one because I'm like, ah. mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not like a succeed and go and celebrate kind of person i'm getting better at like the whole winning and uh self-care stuff it's a big improvement place uh and so friends and family are like you got this is the best analogy and i'm I'm definitely much better at it hey i'm taking a whole week away from you know headquarters and the home office so there we go um the oh where was i going with that one Um, Um, you were talking about what you did or didn't do the remainder of the day that you got your first deal while we wait on a question from one of our loving viewers. Yeah. So the, the rest of that day, I think it was just more, more work. And I was so fired up and like in the zone that I'm like, great, now let's do, do it again and do it again and do it again. Cause you know, that's what I enjoy. Again, the, if I want to, you know, get satisfaction, uh, it's when other people are winning. So the more I put into it, the more others can get out of it. That's a good way to be. I have struggled a lot with separating personal satisfaction with professional success. It's one of my kryptonites. I don't know how to do it. I still don't. I can present myself on LinkedIn, do great videos, uh, do bad videos, just produce get on a call with people, um, but I can't get out of that funk. In your self-care improvement regimen, what has been the most, or what have been some tips, what, what's something that you've not expected to work that did? Because I assume that you've tried many of the common culprits, the workouts, the breathing, meditation, the walks, the journaling, 
the talking to mentors, all that crap that gurus say, right? You've done it. I've done it. Everybody here has done it. You're watching. You've done it. You've done it and you're in, alone in your basement. What, what has worked that you tried that you maybe were skeptical about that ended up hitting? So the workouts, uh, that's a big thing. Whenever I'm more focused, uh, that definitely works. Um, the other one that's really helpful is saying no and having like an accountability partner um, that says, hey, do you really need to go to this meeting? Do you really need to go to that event? Do you really need to uh, do this? Um, and so saying no to other things is kind of like an aha to okay. me because I want to you know, do all things to all people um and and just be there um the other thing is cons and uh ali jafar uh shared this insight with me the um amount of non-fiction that you consume directly correlates to increased revenue generation so more reading more podcasts more non-fiction that you're learning reading news newspaper podcasts things like that um helps focus you, helps educate you. And I've seen that whenever I invest in myself more and, you know, getting up to speed more, that does uh, help. But the biggest thing, Adam, is being persistent and consistent um, and saying, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to do this. And this is what I'm focused on. And this is like less, 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 less. Got it. Do you more. Get, you got a particular piece of nonfiction that you like, that you're reading right now, mm, that people should like read? That. that was your road I, to Damascus moment? Anything like that? Yeah, so I just finished reading the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Right. And I uh I was waiting for like the yes, that's the piece that like changes your life. And yeah. uh it was kind of like you outsource everything. Okay, that, that makes a ton of sense. Uh focus in on like what matters most. And the biggest thing I think I got out of that book was um do what you love and follow your dreams and don't let anything stand in your way it's possible to do more with less. Um, and that's the you know lesson that I got from the book Essentialism. So there's two books that I always recommend to people. First one is Psyched Up by Dan McGinn, and I'll be doing some kind of a book club uh, for it soon. And then the other one is Essentialism by, I think it's Greg McNown. McNown. Um, but those are two of the ones that I definitely uh, recommend to people. Good to know. Listeners, listeners, like we're on a podcast. Viewers, write that down. I'll write it down. And I will ask yeah, we this can last tag, question. Uh, Dan. We'll tag Dan in the somehow. Good. Um, yeah, throw it, throw it in a comment people. somewhere. Uh, okay. Can I so, do that on here? Can uh, you, can go to, you, can, you can go to the LinkedIn event and comment on the on the page where we're streaming. That's what, I, okay. that's what I've learned. I've learned a lot from this experience. Uh, thank you to Pete, by the way, for that, uh, viewers. Took a chance on me. So, last question for you because I've been waiting for a question over here. <clears throat> I'm not sure whether we're going to get it today. That's fine. The question is in line with what I like to talk about on Authentic Avenue generally because I feel like as choppy and rough as I performed in this one, it's going to go in the feed. I, oh, I used to ask people what their definition of authenticity was. I used to ask people how they can advise others to carve their own path to authentic self-expression. Maybe instead... Um, I'd like to ask, what are the best ways that you have seen either yourself or others embed their personal journey into their professional ventures? Because I think that's where authenticity lies, where you are truly either being yourself or layering that which you love with that which you do. Obviously, you do that. It is your motivation, your passion. It allows you to pursue and persist and never to stop. So I got to ask you as we round out, how would you advise that others learn to do it the same way in which you have? I think you need to know yourself first and what it is that gets you excited. And I ask the question to people very often, if money wasn't an issue, what would you do with the next five to 10 years of your life? What would you do? Um, you know, would you travel? Would you get a different job? Would you volunteer? And once you figure out like, what is that that gets you more excited than anything else, then you can say, hmm, how can I achieve that? 
and just being genuine and telling your story. And that's what people love. And that's why we've been successful. Uh, and that's why we continue uh, to, you know, grow and expand and evolve is because people like the way we go about things. They like that I'm a genuine individual. Hey, you get what you see. And this is what we do. This is what we don't do. And oftentimes folks are like, huh, I, I like that. There's some energy here. It's exciting, right? It's contagious. Uh, and that's, you know, my thing, right? So anybody that's that's listening, watching, uh, hopefully you're like excited and there's some kind of a, a takeaway from here, but just to be yourself. And that was something that was difficult, you know, uh, to not uh, follow and, you know, what the book says good looks like. Right. Um, you know, the book doesn't necessarily say leave your six figure salary and team of 100 engineers and scientists and, uh, you know, living in the, the D.C. area to go and uh, do something that is statistically not going to succeed. Um, that's not really what the book of, you know, good <laughs> says to do. Sure. Um, so being okay, uh, with going about, uh, your own path. And I like this, uh, quote from Bruce Lee. Uh, and he says, um, absorb what is useful, discard what is not and add what is uniquely your own. I think that's something that we can all take away from this. And as we develop our authentic selves. I'm going to clip that. I'm going to pull it back later. It's going to be a LinkedIn video in and of itself, I think. Um, and I, I'm glad that we that we rounded out with that. A really nice end. Chaotic start, thanks to yours truly. A really prophetic way to close it out. Uh, Pete Schramm, Lattice. Thank you very much, Pete. What's going to happen now is I'm going to switch back into my other frame. I'm going to say goodbye to you now. You feel free to close that browser window when we're done. <laughs> um, but hey, enjoy the Cape. I'll see you in like a couple weeks. Maybe we'll go play some golf. Let's do it. Bye. Thanks, right. everybody. See you. Check you later. I hope you enjoyed that uh, interview with Pete, this return. I'm trying to do a lot more here with this channel. Thankfully, it's kind of great that right now I'm at eight loyal subscribers. I'm going to try to grow that a little bit, try to have more great conversations. Again, I'm going to do some live things on LinkedIn, which is a little weird, but it's business stuff. So I figure that's where it should live, right? At least for now. I will be there and here and across all sorts of socials at Adam on Brand, by the way. That's where I am and where I'm talking about brands either from a founder's angle or from creators. I really want to get into that niche too. And so hopefully some of the next ones you see will be from content creators who do that as their full-time job. I'm fascinated by that. Hell, I try to do it. And so I figure, well, why not interview them and learn how they do it and bring it to you? That is it for now. Have a great whatever day you're watching this and uh, I'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.